Hey guys, today's video we're going to be talking about Disney Infinity and what you need to play the game. Coming up right now. If you've been to Half Price Books or the flea market or garage sales, I'm sure you have started to see these little guys popping up in the dollar bins and they're very cheap right now and that's why I'm doing this video so that you know when you start seeing some of these guys what you need to play the actual game and some of it is kind of convoluted and it's not as infinite as you would think so if you want to hit that subscribe button we're going to start off real simple here what versions of the game came out on what systems so you know where it's available disney infinity 1.0 came out on the wii the wii u the 3ds the xbox 360 as well as the playstation 3. version 2.0 came out on the wii u the xbox 360 xbox one PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation Vita. Disney Infinity 3.0 was on the Wii U, Xbox 360, Xbox One, the PlayStation 3, and the PlayStation 4. Great, so now we know what versions of the game are on what systems. Let's talk about what you actually need to play the game. You're gonna need three things. First, you're gonna need the base. Second, you're gonna need the game. Thirdly, you're gonna need a character. Now, not all characters work with all versions of the game. For example, a Disney Infinity 3.0 character will not work on the Disney Infinity 1.0 game. It's just how it is. Now, a Disney Infinity 1.0 character will work on the Disney Infinity 3.0 game. To play a specific playset, you're gonna actually need four things. You're gonna need the base, you're gonna need the game, you're gonna need the crystal, which is the playset itself, and then you're also going to need a matching character for that playset. What that means is you can only play Toy Story characters on the Toy Story playset, just like you can only play Cars characters on the Cars playset, or Lone Ranger characters on the Lone Ranger playset, Monsters University on Monsters University playset. You get the idea. So when the starter set first came out for these guys, there were three characters in the original game, Mr. Incredible, Jack Sparrow and Sully from Monsters University. And you could play those characters with the original Crystal. There were other characters that you could play with them. On the Incredibles playset, you had Mr. Incredible, Mrs. Incredible, Dash, Violet, Syndrome, and then later on they actually brought out these Crystal variants of some of the characters, so there's a Crystal version of Mr. Incredible as well. For the Pirates of the Caribbean set, you actually had Jack Sparrow, Davy Jones, as well as Captain Barbosa, and eventually they brought out a crystal version of Jack Sparrow as well. For Monsters University, you had Sully, Mike, and Randy, as well as a crystal version of Sully that they brought out later as well. Those are all the characters that work with the starter set crystal. For the car set, you actually had Lightning McQueen, Francesco, Holly Shiftwell, Mater, and eventually a crystal version of Lightning McQueen as well. For Lone Ranger, they had Tonto and Lone Ranger, and then eventually a crystal version of the Lone Ranger. For the Toy Story line, you had Jesse, Woody, and Buzz Lightyear with a crystal version of Buzz Lightyear as well that came out later. Now here's the part where the Infinity starts to break down, because they had these other characters that came out that you couldn't play on any playset, so you could not play Jack Skellington in with Monsters University. You could only play with him in the toy box. So you had to actually create your own world in the toy box to play as some of these characters. And there's a few. For the toy box only characters, you actually had Agent P, Sorcerer Mickey, Anna, Elsa, Jack Skellington, Phineas, Rapunzel, Vanellope, Wreck-It Ralph, and then a crystal version of Agent P as well. Really quickly, there was a very special version of the Sorcerer Mickey that had a different color star on his hat. It's called the D23 version Sorcerer Mickey. You can find it on eBay. It's very pricey right now for those collectors that really need them all. But for the most part, that's about the only really expensive one out there. As an example, in the Lone Ranger playset, it was go and clear out these bad guys or go load up the train with cattle. For cars, it was gather a certain number of widgets or help somebody in town or race somebody. 
In The Incredibles, it was save someone from somewhere or defeat evil robots. There were also events you could do in each of the playsets, such as racing a car around a track or defeat a certain number of enemies in a given amount of time. In addition to the events, there were chests that only certain characters could open in a given playset. Only Holly Shiftwell could open this chest, but there were other chests for each of the different figures. If you wanted all the content, you needed to get all the figures. And if you had all the figures for the given playset, there was a final chest you could open as well with even more prizes. The Hall of Heroes is another section you can get to from the main menu of the game as well. In the Hall of Heroes, you can see the characters that you've taken ownership of, as well as their progress. If you didn't have a certain character, you could see a short movie about them and inspire you to run out and drop another 15 bucks on that figure. On the floor, you could also view which power discs you had as well, which brings us to the storage books. Were these books that you could put the special discs in, and we're going to talk about the special discs later. I just wanted to bring this up as another accessory for the sets. And this is one of those other things that they basically brought out to try and get more kids interested in it. All right, so we've covered version 1.0 and I think we've covered everybody. Um, let's go on to 2.0. So with Disney 2.0, they actually brought out three new sets, Avengers, Spider-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Almost like they bought something. On the second version of the games, you can actually see that they changed the bottoms of the characters so you know which one is 2.0 versus 1.0. And they did that on the 3.0 version as well. So the 2.0 Toy Box Adventure Games. One is Escape from the Kiln and Assault on Asgard. Think like tower defense for the Assault on Asgard and the Escape from the Kiln is more along the lines of a Diablo top-down hack and slash kind of game. I'm showing gameplay of the Brave Forest Siege right now, playing it as Wreck-It Ralph. It's an isometric view of the world and you can rotate your camera around the character. The Brave Forest Siege is the same gameplay as Escape from the Kiln toy box game as well. Same thing with Stitch's Tropical Rescue is identical to the Asgardian Assault. The difference between them is that for Escape from the Kiln and Asgardian Assault, you're limited just to the Marvel characters. For Stitch's Tropical Rescue and Brave Forest Siege, you can play any character, uh, including figures from Disney 1.0 as well. Also, all four of the Toy Box games can be played couch co-op as well. In Brave Forest Siege and Escape from the Kiln, you get a sidekick that does a few things for you. They can find hidden treasures, be thrown through doors to find items or other things to aid you while you're putting the beat down on the bad guys. Each sidekick's stats are different for attack, defense, and seek. In my opinion, the sidekick to find is one that has a high attack and a high seek value. That way the more doors you can throw them into and find better items. Both Stitch's Tropical Rescue and the Assault of Asgard are tower defense games. On one side of the level, there are doors that will release bad guys, and in the level, you have either one or many towers that will hold cute ducklings you're trying to protect. Your primary job is to defend the ducklings by adding different defensive or offensive towers along the path to deal with the bad guys that are walking. As you deploy towers, you are also fighting alongside them as well. When a bad guy is destroyed, they will drop some cash, which you can then use to buy more towers for that level. You can rescue wandering townsfolk as a secondary goal by throwing them through doors to safety in the level. Doing this will gain you cash to spend on more towers too. With the 2.0 starter set, you actually got three characters. You got Black Widow, Iron Man, and Thor in the set. In 2.0, they actually brought out a feature called Crossover Coins. So as you're exploring New York City with one set, you can get coins with somebody's face on it. One of the examples is Rocket. When you collect all the coins with his face on it, then you can play Rocket in that playset. So they started to break apart the whole Infinity thing and you can start playing different characters with different playsets, but not many. For Marvel Avengers, you actually had Black Widow, Captain America, Falcon, Hawkeye, Hulk, Iron Man, Loki, and Thor. For Marvel Spider-Man, you had 
Spider-Man, Green Goblin, Nova, Nick Fury, Venom, and the Iron Fist. And for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, you actually could play Drax, Gamora, Groot, Rocket, Ronan, Star-Lord, and Yandu. The toy box characters that you could play in 2.0 were Aladdin, Jasmine, Hero, Baymax, Maleficent, Merida, Stitch, Donald Duck, Tinkerbell, and Sorcerer Mickey Crystal version. One of the other things is with these playsets, the more characters you got, the easier the game got because as you got more of these guys, you would get more experience as you played the game. So it's almost like they were trying to get you to buy more because it made the game easier. In the 2.0, the quests got better. It was more than just a go and clean something up or go and collect five of these items. It was actually progressing the storyline much easier and much better. It was more comparable to a normal adventure game, I would say, but you just swap the characters in and out. And that's something else. If your character died in the game, you could swap in another character and pick up right where you left off. There's also a Hall of Heroes for the characters, so the more you actually got, they would actually have these statues, and I'm showing it here so you guys can see it. As you leveled up the character, the statues would change as well. Bronze, silver, gold. Also, like version 1.0, they brought out version 2.0 discs as well, and they were still in blind packs, so you had no idea what you were getting. Um, I would definitely recommend getting 2.0 over 1.0 if you're looking to start. One more thing, you can actually play all the 1.0 characters in the 2.0 toy box as well, so they do carry forward. So version three, half of the games were about Star Wars. You almost like they bought something. Kind of like Marvel. When Disney Infinity version 3.0 came out, it came with Anakin Skywalker and Ashoka and the crystal playset for Twilight of the Republic. So for Star Wars, you have Twilight of the Republic, Rise Against the Empire, and The Force Awakens. Then for Disney, you also have Inside Out and Finding Dory playsets. And then they also have this Marvel Battlegrounds, which kind of was like a brawler sort of game. It's fun. They had great introductory instructions on how to fight. Teaches you how to do all the moves, basic combat. It was a fun brawler and you could use all of the Marvel characters with it, which is great. So for the Finding Dory Plus set, you have two characters, Dory and Nemo similar to the Lone Ranger set where you had Lone Ranger and Tonto. For Inside Out, you have the five feelings. So you have anger, disgust, fear, joy, and sadness. For the Marvel Battlegrounds, they actually brought out Ant-Man, Black Panther, another version of the Captain America, the Hulkbuster, Ultron, and Vision. Another character they brought out is the Black Suit Spider-Man. That was originally just in the PlayStation Vita version of the game but they brought it out in version 3.0 as well. For the Rise Against the Empire playset, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia. You also have a light effects version of Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader as well. So their lightsabers will light up from underneath when you put them on the base. Twilights of the Republic version, you have Ashoka, Anakin, Darth Maul, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and then light effects versions of Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. Some of the other Star Wars characters in here are Boba Fett, Kanan Jarrus, Ezra Bridger, Sabine Wren, Zeb Aurelius, and with Kanan Jarrus, there's a light effects version as well. The Toy Box character lineup is actually fairly large too. You have Alice, the Mad Hatter, Time, Baloo, Mickey and Minnie Mouse, Mulan, Nick Wilde, Judy Hopps, Olaf, Cora, Sam Flynn, and Spot. And one of the other things is they brought out more discs in this one too. However, they stopped doing the blind packs, thankfully. So when you bought the discs, you knew exactly what you were getting. Now, there's a lot going on in version 3.0, and this is the last version that they brought out. There were some speculations online about other characters that were coming out or were making their way out. Um, I obviously can't speak to that.
in this version, they brought out the mini map for all of the Star Wars playsets as well, which was a great addition. They also had multiple worlds, so you could actually traverse different planets as you were playing the game as well. The quest structure is fairly similar across all of these games. Uh, go pick this up and return it, or go kill these bad guys, or go race this and beat some specific time. They're all very similar, which is, I think, another one of the downfalls of the game. Through all of the Star Wars games, you have champion coins that you can get, which allow you to play other characters on that given play set. So in The Force Awakens, you start out in town and you actually have to salvage a lot. And when I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Finding Dory was very much meant for younger children. Uh, the gameplay is very simple. You're going back to the sanctuary to rescue fish, and right outside of the sanctuary, you're actually building a town for them as well, which you can then customize with different colors and coral and whatnot. The inside out playset is more along the lines of a platformer, and it's very simple. The target audience for this, again, was younger kids so the levels are really easy the characters do level up like in all the other games it's a bright and whimsical platforming game some levels have a low isometric fixed camera angle and some of them are just side scrolling there are a few bad guys that will knock you around and deal a bit of damage but nothing that is overly concerning at some points of the game you're either going to need to swap out to a specific character or disguise as that given character for a short period of time to beat a certain objective. There are cute little cutscenes that push the story forward, but the close-ups could have been done a little bit better as they seem kind of rough. However, I have to commend them on the voice actors that worked on this as they were spot on. One of the things that I think doomed this, and with any of the you know Toys to Life set, is the cost. So you buy a $60 game, and then you start buying the characters. The characters are all in the game. You just have to unlock it with these little guys to sit on their base. Um, and then you have the discs as well, which do different things. And I think that was part of the downfall of this is the cost and the fact that it wasn't exactly infinite so you can only play certain characters on certain play sets and certain characters you couldn't play on any play set you had to play them in the sand, in the toy box only just my personal opinion these things right now they're going for cheap you can find them at thrift stores secondhand stores garage sales um, they're expensive on eBay but everything is expensive on eBay but like anything else, this, this guy, I bought it a flea market for $5 along with this guy and this guy and a bunch of other characters. And you can get them for cheap now. You just gotta look and be patient. Let's talk about these discs. And what these do is many different things. Some of them give you special abilities. Some of them give you a weapon that you can use in the game. Some of them, are vehicles and some of them will call in other characters some of them just change the background or the sky or the ground one of the things about disney infinity is you could create your own levels and you could have different skies or different ground effects and each of the boxes or worlds or whatever would have these special patterns on them if you had this disc all right guys hope you enjoyed the video 
Hit subscribe if you want to get updates on our weekly releases. Like if you have liked the video. If you've got any comments, leave them below. Other than that, have a great day and be good to each other.